Nanny of the Maroons This story is one of the most historical events that took place during the 18th century. Nanny of the Maroons was born in West Africa in 1686. She was one of many children and was said to be a member of the Ashanti tribe. She and her brothers were captured and brought to the Caribbean through the Atlantic slave trade. Her, amongst several slaves, were brought to the island of Jamaica. Jamaica, formerly known as Santiago, is an island within the Caribbean Sea and south of the United States. It is the third largest island of the Greater Antilles. It lies south of Cuba and west of Haiti and Dominican Republic. The island was the home of the native indigenous Arawak and Tejanos. Jamaica was under the Spanish rule following the discovery of Christopher Columbus in 1494. It remained one of the possessions of Spain until 1655. England conquered the island and renamed it Jamaica. Under British rule, Jamaica became the leading exporter of sugar with its plantation economy and the imports of slaves from Africa. Upon arrival in Jamaica, Nanny and her brothers were sold to a plantation owner in St. Thomas Parish. During this time, there were several attempts at rebellion revolts by the slaves within the Caribbean and South America, as well as the Americas. Many of these attempts resulted in the death and not successful. One night, while making an attempt to escape, Nanny and her four brothers, Akapung, Kujo, Johnny, and Kwa ran away and escaped in the area we now call Blue Mountain, or north of the parish of St. Thomas. This movement by Nanny and her siblings would spark the beginning of years of rebellions on the island. While hiding, Nanny and her brothers split up amongst the rebels and formed small maroon communities throughout the island. In order to survive, the towns would partake in maintaining their own properties and form communities. Nanny became one of the most noted maroon organizers. Her communities and rebels fought consistently with the former capturers. For many years, the men and women of the maroon cities also, along with the Tahano and Arawak natives, would fight and unite against the British. This is the time the Nanny of Maroon started to rebel and raid nearby slave plantations and help release other slaves who joined their community. In fear of losing their slaves, many Europeans fought to destroy the small communities of free slaves. Nanny was often commended for her years of defending her community and was rumored to have an advantage due to African practice of obia. Nanny would maintain her freedom throughout the span of her adult life. It is said that she formed one of the largest maroon communities in the island and helped free a thousand slaves in Jamaica. Her influence was massive and resulted in many vicious results against the British. Many of them took place after her death. It is legend that the Maroons on this island actually fought their way back to West Africa. This story proved to be very true. Between the time of 1796 and 1800, 550 Maroons were deported from Jamaica after years of Maroon Wars and lived in Nova Scotia. As a result, many of them in the 1800s were sent back to Sierra Leone. Nanny of the Maroons died a free woman in 1733 and was able to maintain her freedom and the freedom of her community. To this day, the towns created by the Maroons can still be found throughout Jamaica. Nanny of the Maroons is not only noted as one of the Caribbean's fiercest revolutionists, she is one of the most noted women in Caribbean history. Years after her death, the island slaves were fully emancipated in 1838. The island itself became independent from the United Kingdom in August 6, 1962. This is a brief history of Nanny of the Maroons.